Hey, what's up guys, Eric here. So recently I picked up the Microsoft Surface Pro 6. This is the i7 version. It has an i7-8650U clocked at 1.9 gigahertz. That actually turbos all the way up to 4.2 gigahertz. Rather impressive. Regardless, I wanted to see how this was going to perform compared to my other two main computers. My Alienware 13-inch R3, which has an i7 CPU, it's only four cores clocked at 2.8 gigahertz. And then I wanted to also compare it to my 2018 MacBook Pro, which has a six core i7 chip clocked at 2.6 gigahertz. How does this compare? Let's find out. So the first test I did was in Geekbench, and in terms of the CPU, on the Alienware, we got a single core score of about 4300, and a multi-core score of about 15,000. Not surprisingly though, the MacBook did a single core score of almost 4300, and a multi-core score of about 20,000. Moving on though to the Surface, it did surprise me. The single core score, 5,000 which is better than the Alienware by a decent amount. Now the multi-core score though was a little bit lower at about a little more than 13,000, but still, that's definitely not bad at all. Now still in Geekbench, I also ran an OpenCL test. So starting off with the Alienware, which has a NVIDIA 1060 in it, I got a score of almost 125,000 points. That's doing well. And then moving on to the MacBook with its RX 560, we're getting a score of almost 42,000. So it's significantly lower than the Alienware, of course, but then looking at the Surface, the Surface got a score of around 36,000. So of course it is the lowest score, but it's actually not that bad, considering the fact that the Surface Pro has the Intel integrated GPU chipset. Nothing discreet, no AMD, no NVIDIA. Anywho though, moving on to Synbench. So Synbench, this is R20, their latest version of it. Um, they did get rid of the GPU benchmarking on it, so we can only do a CPU benchmark. But looking at the Alienware, we got a score of about 1700, which is pretty reasonable. The MacBook though did do better at a score of around 2100. And then the Surface got a score of about 14, almost 1500, which yes, is the lowest score. Uh, well, what's interesting to note though, is the Surface definitely took a lot longer than both the MacBook and the Alienware. And you would expect that due to its lower score. But I was taking a look at the clock speed of the CPU. And even though the clock speed can go up to 4.2 gigahertz, like the MacBook, this thing throttles. And it doesn't throttle in the way you would expect. The actual CPU doesn't actually reach its maximum temperature to make it throttle. However, the Surface has other sensors and power limitations that prevent it from completely keeping up its max clock speed. But that's just what you should expect from such a small and thin device. Anyway, moving on though to a slightly more realistic test, um, I actually downloaded Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve editing software on all the computers. Now, yes, the MacBook Pro running macOS might operate a little bit differently due to the operating system, so do keep that in mind. Regardless though, um, I downloaded the latest version of DaVinci Resolve on all these machines. I had the same 1080p clip, it was just me at a green screen, it was about a little more than 5 minutes in length. I simply threw the clip onto the timeline and clicked render on all of the machines. And the MacBook blew everything away, it rendered out the clip, the 5-ish minute clip, in under 1 minute. The Alienware took about a little less than five minutes. It was like four minutes, 30 seconds, so slightly faster than real time. The Surface though, on the other hand, took almost eight minutes to render out the five minute clip. So arguably almost double the time. So those are some quick and dirty benchmarks of the Surface Pro compared to some other computers I have laying around in the studio. If you wanna see anything else on the Surface Pro, let me know in the comment section below. Maybe we'll be trying out some gaming with this. Um, and I don't know, we'll find out, let me know in the comments. Uh, anyway, I'm Eric and I will catch you in the next one.